In this video, we will be defining linear time invariant systems. A system is any process that produces an output in response to an input as illustrated by the following block diagram. A system could be a mechanical, space, industrial, commercial, scientific, electrical, electronic, medical, optical system, etc. In this course, we will be dealing with two types of systems. The first one is the continuous system, and the second is the discrete system. Continuous systems input and output continuous signals, such as when using analog electronic circuits. On the other hand, discrete systems input and output discrete signals, such as when using computer programs or digital computers. Several common rules are used in naming signals that you should be familiar with. First, the continuous signals use parentheses to represent the input and output signals, while discrete signals use brackets instead. It is also worth noting that signals use lowercase letters where uppercase letters are reserved for frequency domain, such as the case for the Laplace S or the Z domain, that we will discuss in later videos. If a more descriptive name is available, go ahead and use that. If not, we tend to use the X for the input and Y for the output. Now whether the system is continuous or discrete, we will be assuming that the systems are linear and time invariant throughout this course. Time invariance. We will be assuming that all control systems are stationary with respect to time during the operation of the system and this is what we call time invariant system. In practice, most physical systems contain elements that drift or vary with time. For example, the winding resistor of an electric motor will vary when the motor is first being excited and its temperature is rising. We do know that as temperature increases, copper winding resistance increases. The second property that we will be assuming for all our control systems in this course is linearity. Fortunately, most useful systems can be made to fall into the linear systems category. This fact is extremely important, so let's investigate this property in more details. A system is called linear if it has at least the first two mathematical properties which are the homogeneity and the additivity. The third property, which is the shift invariance, is not a strict requirement for linearity, but it is a mandatory property for most digital signal processing techniques. For example, when you see the term linear system used in digital signal processing, you should assume it includes shift invariance unless you have a reason to believe otherwise. For clarity purposes, I will be using discrete systems with discrete input and output signals in order to describe the three main mathematical properties for linear systems.
homogeneity. Homogeneity means that a change in the input signal's amplitude results in a corresponding change in the output signal's amplitude. In mathematical terms, if an input signal of x result in an output signal of y, then multiplying the input by k will result by an output of ky. Now we move on to the second property of linear systems, which is the additivity. The property of additivity is illustrated in the following block diagrams. If you consider a system where an input of x1 produces an output of y1, further suppose that a different input x2 produces another output y2, then the system is said to be additive if an input of x1 plus x2 results in an output of y1 plus y2 for all possible input signals. In other words, signals added at the input produces signals that are added at the output the third property is the shift invariance this means that a shift in the input signal will result in an identical shift in the output signal. In more formal terms, if an input signal of x results in an output of y, then if we apply a shift to the input signal, this should result in an output signal with the same shift. Pay particular notice to how the mathematics of this shift is written. It will be used heavily in the upcoming chapters. By adding a constant a, for example, to the independent variable n, the waveform can advance or retard in the horizontal direction. For example, if the added constant a is a positive value of say 2, then the signal is shifted left by two samples. And if the added constant a is a negative 2, then the signal is shifted right by two samples. We sometimes refer to this as signal advance or delay respectively. In conclusion, shift invariance can be thought of as an additional aspect of linearity. This is needed when signals and systems are involved. The three properties discussed previously homogeneity, additivity, and shift invariance are important because they provide the mathematical basis for defining linear systems. Unfortunately, these properties alone do not provide most engineers with the intuitive feeling of what linear systems are about. Hence, the properties of static linearity and sinusoidal fidelity are often of a great help here. All linear systems have the property of static linearity. The opposite is not always true though. There are systems that show static linearity but are not linear with respect to the changing signals. However, 
to conclude if a system has a static linearity and is a memoryless ie the output depends only on the present state of the input and not on its history then we can consider the system is linear now last important characteristic of linear systems that we will be discussing for the sake of this course is how they behave with sinusoids this property is often called sinusoidal fidelity this means if the input to a linear system is a sinusoidal wave then the output will also be a sinusoidal wave at the same frequency as the input Although a sinusoid on the input guarantees a sinusoid on the output, the two may be different in amplitude and phase. This may be familiar from your knowledge of electronics, that a circuit can be described by its frequency response. Later we will discuss body plots and we will study how the gain and phase may vary with the frequency. So in general, if an engineer is trying to determine if an electronic device is linear, perhaps the engineer would attach a sine wave generator to the input of the device and an oscilloscope to the output. If the engineer sees all the three properties discussed before, then perhaps with a level of confidence we could say that the system is linear. However, the conclusion is not a rigorous mathematical proof. In practice, you are more likely to come across nonlinear systems. Your main strategy in this case is to make the nonlinear system resemble a linear system. Normally, there are some common ways of doing this. So you could first ignore the nonlinearity. If the nonlinearity is small enough, the system can be approximated as linear, and those errors associated with the assumption could be tolerated as noise or simply ignored. Or perhaps your second strategy could be to keep your signals very small. Many nonlinear systems appear linear if the signals have a very small amplitude. And this is the case with transistors, for example. Transistors are very nonlinear over their full range of operation but provide an accurate and linear amplification when the signals are kept under few millivolts, for example. Alternatively, you could use homomorphic signal processing, some sort of linearizing transforms that can be applied in order to linearize some nonlinear behaviors. Hopefully, by now you have an idea of the difference between linear and nonlinear systems and what strategies perhaps you could use in order to make use of nonlinear systems.